Hi guys, it's Si here at Lakeland Ascents and Highland Ascents. Today's video, what I'm going to do is show you how to take uh, mountaineering coils um, and tie those off or lock those off so they're nice and secure around your body. We get a lot of folk come on courses and we obviously teach this on our mountaineering and our scrambling uh, courses, but it's, you know, it's quite a new skill. It's quite hard to get it kind of embedded in your head. So hopefully this video will help as a refresher for those people uh, who've been on the courses and for everybody else out there as well. So the video is going to be split into two halves. So the first half, we're just going to get on with it and take the coils and lock them off, show you how to do that. And then the second half, I'll just uh, give you a quick tip on, um, on a couple of little aspects on uh, rope length and uh, how to make taking the coils and tying them off a little bit easier. Okay, so let's get on it. Okay, so first things first, I've got my scrambling rope here and tied in with a nice neat uh, re-threaded figure of eight, okay? Um, and I've got my rucksack on as well, and if I've got a hood, then I'll probably put that up as well. And what that means is when I'm taking my coils, um, you know, the rucksack isn't on top of them, and I can access them nice and easily if I need to get more rope out or put some rope away. It also means that my hood isn't underneath the coils and the coils are in the way if I kind of need to get my hood up because the weather changes or whatever. So rucksack's on, hood is kind of up, okay. And what I'm gonna do is basically chuck a coil over my left shoulder, okay. So it's going up over my left shoulder, around my neck and back down again. And I wanna make sure that this first um, strand is nice and tight. So if I start to introduce slack into the system now, you're going to end up with uh, really kind of messy, uh, unneat coils, if that makes sense. So nice and tight. Then I'm going to put my hands down by my tying knot, okay? So just above my harness, basically, around my sort of belly button, I guess. Um, and I'm going to wrap the rope, the live rope, so the rope is going to my second, um, underneath my palm, and then just chuck it over my shoulder again. So that's my first uh, coil around my neck. Okay, what I'm now going to do is just keep taking coils until I put away as much rope um, as I need to. And if you look at the second half of the video, I'll give you a little tip on uh, how many coils I take, uh, you know, for kind of most sort of scrambling terrain. Okay, so my hand's going to stay in the same place and I'm just going to wrap coil after coil under my palm and just flick the uh, rope over my head. Okay, I'm going to do that until I'm happy to put away enough rope, okay? When I'm taking my coils, I'm just making sure that my hand doesn't kind of come up here or drop lower, because if I do that, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna end up with some short coils and some long coils, and they're just gonna be really messy and potentially kind of fall off my shoulder, all right? Um, I don't want my hand too low, because what can happen is then I end up with massive long coils and they just drop off my shoulder when I'm moving around on the mountain. And I don't want my hand too high, because then I end up with really short coils and I can't really kind of move around um, because I'm sort of constrained and restricted, if you like, uh, by the coils around my neck. So for me, what works quite well is about sort of belly button, belly button height. Okay, so I've taken my coils. Next thing I'm gonna do is just put my right hand through all of them, okay? So they go over my uh, right shoulder, essentially, yeah? Um, so there they are over my right shoulder. Now I'm just gonna cinch them all up and what I want to make sure of is this coil here, or this first strand, is nice and tight. So, for example, I don't want it like this, yeah? So, I'm going to cinch them all up, and I'm going to do that by grabbing hold of all of the coils and that first strand, and just rotating them in the direction that they've taken them. So that's over my left shoulder and back down. Get them nice and tight, okay? They're nice and neat now, and then we tie them off. They'll hopefully stay nice and neat for the rest of my day, okay? So, cinch them up. Right, this is, the, this is the bit that kind of blows people's minds a little bit, and this is how we lock them off. Because at the moment, if I fall, or if I need to um, use this rope to look after my second, then, you know, they're going to quite, and, uh, and you pull on this, it's just going to strangle me at the end of the day, isn't it? If, the, if they haven't already fallen off my shoulder by this point. So we need to lock them off. Okay, Jem's having a great time sniffing around there. She's been running, ar running around up the grade one at the side of this route today. It's amazing what she can get up, really. But anyway... Um, I digress. Um, so what I'm going to do to lock them off, and everyone does this differently, so you know, look at different methods, see what works for you, but what's important is that they are locked off and they are nice and secure, okay? Um, so this is what I do, okay? 
So I like to pass my hand through, so this is my right hand, through all of my chest coils and, my, and the first strand, and then grab the live rope, okay? Then I'll pull the live rope back through all the coils and the uh, first strand, okay, making sure that's captured. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a bite about this length, and I'm gonna tie an overhand knot around the live rope. So that basically, the way that works is the bite, the loop, goes around the back of the live rope, and then I make a little twist in um, the loop by just twisting it away from me, okay? A bit longer. And that gives me a little hole to pop the bite through. And essentially what I've done is I've tied an overhand knot, but with this live strand going through the middle of it. Then just to tighten everything up, okay, I'm gonna pull on the live rope, and I'm gonna pull on each strand of the bite, of the loop, if you like, uh, just to cinch everything up around the coils. Now everything's locked off nicely. There's obviously a risk that this could work its way loose, so what I'm gonna do is get a carabiner, screw gate carabiner, bash it through there, and then clip it back to my tie-in loop, okay, on my harness, and whiz that gate up, okay? That's my coils nice and secure, not too long, not too short, can move around nice and freely, all right? At the moment, if I fall off or if I have to attach to a belay or something like that and lean back on it, I'm nice and safe, okay, because here's my attachment point. But if you notice, the pull on me is kind of, kind of around sort of chest height. Um, you know, what I want is it to be pulling from my sit harness so the sit harness can keep me nicely upright, okay? Um, so what I need to do is change where the pull comes from. So rather than from my chest, I want it to come from down here on my sit harness, okay? So to do that, all I'm gonna do is tie a little clove hitch, okay? And fire that clove hitch into my beaner, whiz that up again, tighten up my clove hitch. Now, if I was to fall or if I was needed to load this rope, you can see the, the pull and the force is coming from my, my actual harness. So that's my coils taken, okay? So second half of this video, I'll just give you a little tip on the number of coils I take um, at the start of pretty much any day. Um, it kind of works for most mountaineering terrain, caveat, caveat. Uh, and I'll also show you a little tip um, to help you tie this knot here, because some folk kind of struggle with this knot. So if you're keen for that, then make sure you uh, watch the rest of this video. Just before we do that, um, just make sure you subscribe to this channel if you're into this kind of instructional stuff. Going to be putting loads of stuff up on uh, mountaineering, rock climbing, loads of kit reviews, tips and tricks. It's all totally free, 100% free. So subscribe and uh, you won't miss out on that new content. First things first, just a quick tip to help you tie that overhand knot because that can blow people's minds, okay? So I'm at this stage here, my coils are around my shoulder. I just get them cinched up again because they've worked loose. Okay, so my hand goes through everything you know, encapsulating the um, first uh, strand as well. I pull that bite back, got my bite about this length, okay, so, you know, it's a good, you know, uh, palm width, a palm width in length, I guess, uh, maybe a little bit more. Um, and what I wanna do is tie an overhand knot around here. Now, for some reason, folk get a little bit confused with this, okay, but essentially, it's round the back of that first strand, grab hold of both strands here of your bite, and sort of push them away from you, which gives you this little uh, loop to uh, bosh the, um, the loop of your bite uh, through, okay? But another way of thinking about it, guys, right, it's just an overhand knot, right? So if you just ignore that live rope for a minute and take this bite, and if I said to you, just tie an overhand knot in this bite, you just do this, I'm pretty sure most people would just go, make a loop, put the end through the loop, one overhand knot, all right? So nice and straightforward. It's the first knot you ever learn. It's a granny knot, basically, okay? So that's all you're doing. So you're getting your loop, you're, making a, you, you're basically making a little loop in it and then putting the end through that hole. So that's all you're gonna do, guys, but you're gonna do it around this strand. So try and ignore the strand, okay? And just do what you've just done. So just gonna make a little loop and then push the end through that hole. Okay, so if it does get a little bit confusing and you can't really work out how to capture this strand, get rid of the strand, tie a few overhand knots just in that bite, get your head into that zone, put the strand back in, you'll probably find that quite straightforward. And then obviously I just need to get my beaner through there, through my rope loop, tie my clove hitch, and I'm good to go. Okay, cool, so yeah, as promised, here's a little tip on sort of determining how much rope you need out 
um, for your kind of scrambling route, route or your mountaineering route and therefore how many coils you need to uh, stash away around your body. Okay, so unfortunately there isn't like a magic formula, you know, it does depend massively on the sort of terrain you're going to be on. If there's going to be like loads of climbing and, you know, potentially sort of longer pitches where you need to run it out a little bit more to a belay, then you need more rope. If you're going to be kind of moving together a little bit more, doing some shorter pitches, stuff like that, you need less rope, right? Um, but if I get to a route and I've not done it before and I think it's going to be kind of more of the latter, so, you know, lots of short pitches, lots of fluid efficient scrambling. This is what I kind of go for as a starting point. So let's assume that this is my second tied in here. So I basically go to their harness. This is their harness here. And I'll take five spans, arm spans of rope. So one, two, three, four, five, okay. And then I'll tie a little knot, all right? So this is basically like a little marker for me. So just a little overhand knot is fine. Chuck that on the floor. And I now know that what rope is left between that knot and me is the rope that I don't need, okay? So exactly as before, hood goes up if needed, you know, rucksack on, strand goes over the left shoulder. And just being careful, I don't knock my mic off. Take my coils so hand stays nice and low, you know, around my uh, tie in knot. And I don't have to actually count how many coils I have taken here. So it's not a case of, oh, I always take 11, I always take 15 or whatever, because it depends how long the rope is, you know, it depends how thick the rope is, There's loads of factors that go into it. But what I'll do is I'll take coils until I get to this knot so maybe you know half a coil or so from this knot all right then just as before rope goes over my shoulder like that cinch them all up make sure it's nice and tight and that first strand is nice and tight as well can now pop this knot out get that out of the way same as before hand goes through everything making sure i've got that first strand as well okay got my bite tie my bite in an overhand knot around my live rope, pull my live rope, pull both strands to cinch everything up, get my gate, through my tie-in loop, okay, nice and secure, and just drop that pull, or make sure the force is pulling from my harness rather than my chest. I lob in a quick clovich in there, and I'm good to go. And what I now know is I've got five arm spans, okay, of rope, on the floor here between me and my second, which is gonna be enough for kind of like easy-ish uh, terrain where I'm not basically um, getting into, a, into climbing territory and having to run the rope out to, to belays and stuff like that. Um, and it's also gonna be enough that I can actually hold it in my hand. So if I wanted to, I could take some hand coils and I know that I can hold five um, arm spans worth of rope in a gloved hand um, you know, nice, nice and easily. That works for me really well. Okay, just a final thing, guys. Don't forget when you are scrambling, you know, you've just put away all these coils, however many there are here. Um, you see a lot of folk, you know, they'll basically uh, go in up a route and they'll see a really great spike, but they can't quite get to it because they haven't got enough rope. Um, but what they'll do, they'll, they'll make do and, may, and maybe kind of be laid a second in a, in a less safe manner. And all they needed to do is just whiz this knot off, take off a couple of coils, and then they could have got to that spike, okay? So get practicing, taking these coils off, putting them back on, tying them off super fast, super efficient, so that that excuse kind of doesn't pop, it, pop its head up when you do need more rope on the route. Okay, great. So if you like these videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we're going to be throwing out loads of free instructional stuff, like I say. And if there's anything that you'd like to see that we haven't covered yet, then, um, you know, fire it in the comments and we'll make a little video for you because we're all about just trying to help you out as climbers and mountaineers and move you on, all right? Um, if you do this differently, I'd love to hear about it. You know, if you've got any different ways of tying off the coils, maybe like chuck a link in the uh, comments below and then we'll have a nice library of info for people to try different methods out and, um, and see what works for them. Okay, that's me. See you out there.